Hi, my name is Tanner. I'm the plant propagation manager here at United Plant Savers. And today we're gonna to be talking about cultivating golden seal, uh, Hydrasis canadensis. And we're gonna demonstrate how to plant golden seal rootlets using the wild simulated method. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about uh, the life cycle of golden seal, how those plants grow and develop, how they reproduce. We're gonna talk about site selection, what you're gonna be looking for in a good quality uh, planting site. Um, we'll cover the site preparation needed before planting, demonstrate the planting technique, and then we'll talk a little bit about maintenance and uh, pest and disease control that uh, you'll need going forward. Golden seal is a perennial rhizome, so it, it comes back every year. Um, and it typically grows pretty shallowly beneath the soil, about half inch, uh, three quarters inch deep. And it grows laterally from an active bud. You know, this is the terminal bud here on this rootlet. Um, and this main part of the root is the rhizome, and these are the fibrous roots. Golden seal grows through several stages of development before reaching maturity. Plants start as seedlings and persist in that state for a year or two and then they progress to a single leaf juvenile plant. Generally after four or five years growth, um, maybe six or seven, depending on the growing site and the growing conditions, the plants will develop uh, two, two leaves and become reproductively mature. Golden seal, once they become reproductively mature, can reproduce by seeds or by root division, where these fibrous roots spread through the soil and new plants will emerge from tiny bud scales. It's a clonal growth pattern where a dense patch will form as the plants spread out and grow. Plants can also be propagated by dividing the rhizome. So sometimes as your plants mature, you'll start to see new growth coming off the side and it'll develop a second bud. And that gives us the opportunity to where we can divide this root into it two new plants. So right here you can see is a nice dividing line. All you need for a good root cutting is a good active terminal bud and fibrous roots to make sure that that rootlet has an ability to feed. So right here all you need is about half an inch of root material. You can see it where it wants to divide naturally. And there we have two new plants that can be replanted. So as your plants grow and mature, this is a good way to help spread your populations. And also if you're gonna be harvesting any rootlets or for medicine making, you can always take off a little chunk and replant it and then have a little uh, piece to use. Site selection is a really important part of, of being successful with golden seal cultivation. Um, and the wild simulated method really relies on selecting a good, a naturally well-suited and good quality growing site. Um, so right now we're here in a nice mixed hardwood forest uh, with a diversity of tree species. Uh, we have tulip poplar, sugar maple, um, we have a chinkapin oak here, pawpaws, spice bush, a good diversity of uh, native vegetation. Um, that's typically found here on our shady north-facing aspects. Now, golden seal is a, is a shade-loving species. It requires shade to survive. Um, generally, 70-75% is, uh, is necessary to keep the plants healthy and thriving. Um, so, here in this site, we're going to have that shade provided by the forest uh, canopy above us. Um, but if you're, if you're growing golden seal in a more garden uh, landscape type setting, uh, shade can be provided other ways with the artificial shade cloth or um, you know, shade trees in your yard or, or things like that. Site preparation is pretty simple. You know, it's best to do as minimal site preparation as possible so you can leave your growing site as close to its natural state as possible. But some things that are commonly needed are picking up large sticks and debris that are going to be in your working area and that are going to get tangled up in your tools. Pruning low-hanging branches from any uh, small trees in the growing site that are going to be, you know, hanging down in your working area and also providing or, you know, creating excess shade that might be undesirable in your growing site. And lastly, we'll be pruning out any competitive vegetation or pruning back, you know, any competitive vegetation that might be 
uh, in your growing site that's going to heavily interfere with the establishment of your plants. Um, site preparation, uh, and for me, it's mostly about pruning, um, and that vegetation will regrow, and that's one of the things you're going to have to do over time is to come back in and, and make sure things remain open. Now we're ready to plant our roots. Uh, we've got our planting site picked out. We're using a string line to keep our rows straight and equally spaced. Depending on how many roots you have, that might not be necessary. Um, you could use whatever technique you want. Regardless of whatever method you're gonna use, first we're gonna start by pulling the leaves down off of our area that we're gonna plant so they're out of the way and can be used to cover the plants after they're planted. Now that we have our planting strip cleared off, we're ready to make a furrow down our uh, line here. And we typically use a mattock for this. This is uh, probably the best suited tool for the task. You're gonna make your trench or your planting furrow or individual hole, depending on how you're planting your rootlets, about two, two and a half inches deep. Uh, you know, two inches on average. Once we plant the rootlet, the goal is to have about three quarters of an inch of soil above the, the top of the bud. Sometimes when you open up your trench, you'll have a lot of tree roots hanging into your furrow. You can just use your hand pruners to snip them back if they're in the way, or sometimes they just pull right out of the ground. This helps reduce just some competition for the roots. So now that we have our furrow ready to plant, we're ready to put the roots in the ground. Um, golden seal grows as a lateral growing rhizome. So it's growing laterally, it doesn't grow straight down. So when we plant them, you basically plant them on their side with the fibrous roots spread out and the buds are facing up. That's the most important thing. As long as your buds are facing up, you're good to go. You can see this one's the same way. It's got a little bit of a curved orientation. Sometimes the roots don't seem to have a very curved orientation. They look like they're more straight up and down, like this one here, but you kind of set it on its side at a little bit of a, about 45 degree angle, and it should be good to go. Now, once we plant, start planting the roots, we need to space them about six inches apart so they have room to grow and fill in. And if your hole seems a little bit deep, you can always fill it in so it's a little more shallow. So now that we have our roots planted in the furrow, we, it's time to recover them. We're simply just gonna take the soil from our, uh, that was loosened when we made our furrow and recover our roots. Sometimes you have to kind of massage the soil clumps apart so you get a more loamy texture. Just to kind of depends on the quality of your soil, like how well it breaks up. You just want to lightly firm in the soil to make sure it doesn't heave out of the ground when the frost comes. So after your roots are planted, it's really important to get the leaf litter that we removed off the site back on top of our planted area. Um, this will help provide insulation over winter um, and you know will continue to break down and provide organic matter in the soil. Uh, but this will just give it a little extra protection. If you're planting early in the fall, you know, before peak leaf drop, it's generally not that big of a deal because there's plenty of leaves to fall down and cover your bed. But if you're later in the season and most of your leaves have already fallen like we are now, it's really important to manually put the leaves back on the bed. So we're just going to do that real quick. And you could use whatever technique you like, your hands, your tool, doesn't really matter. So your golden seal roots are going to be ready to harvest generally after about you know four or five years uh, following transplant. It really just depends on how uh, old the rootlets are when you plant them, and you know thus how fast they're going to reach maturity and start reproducing. Uh, but typically, it's you know between four and six years after transplanting, your plants will be ready to harvest or subdivide and replant, like we demonstrated earlier. Um, golden seal is always harvested in the fall of the year, um, as well as planted in the fall of the year. You know, we're, we're out here planting right now at this time of year. Um, but we harvest our plants in the fall as the leaves begin to die back and the medicinal constituents that were stored in the leaves are relocated to the roots. So by harvesting in the fall, we're ensuring that 
the plant has had time to reproduce, disperse its seeds, and all the medicinal alkaloids are gonna be uh, available in the root. It's good to be aware of a few uh, maintenance tasks or issues that might arise over the years. Um, you know, golden seal is a long-lived plant. It's going to grow for many, many years. Um, so eventually at some point in time, you might have to deal with a potential pest problem or, or disease problem. Um, golden seal is pretty naturally disease resistant, and there's not a whole lot of uh, pathogens that affect the species. Um, but you can get leaf blights in really wet years that causes the uh, leaves to, to rot away. And typically that'll just resolve itself and it's, it's kind of just a seasonal uh, weather related phenomenon. Um, moles can dig through your beds and, and potentially eat rootlets or, or cause problems that way. Um, you know, they can be baited or, or trapped. Um, moles and voles can be difficult to control organically. Um, you know, basically trapping is, is pretty much your only organic um, option. So to wrap things up, we've uh, talked about a little bit about golden seal's life cycle and how the plants grow and develop. We've talked about site selection. We've demonstrated the planting technique using the wild simulated method. Again, our most important takeaways here are getting our roots planted to the proper depth, about two inches deep. And so there's about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch soil above our terminal bud. Our rootlets are spaced six inches apart and we've remulched the site with our leaves after planting and put them in uh, to a nice rest for winter.